Welcome to Lab 4 Podcast on Lycophytes with Dr. Jernstead. Hello, Dr. Jernstead. Hello. So we're going to take a look at the big picture and sort of narrow it down. So first, could you tell me where these plants fit in the context of plant phylogeny and how would you characterize their diversity relative to other plants? The lycophytes rose, arose about 400 million years ago, and they're the earliest divergent lineage of vascular plants. So they split off and have evolved independently for some 400 million years. In terms of the number of species, they're the third largest group of the vascular plants after the flowering plants and the true ferns. They don't have a huge amount of taxonomy within them, which is probably a good thing. There are three families. There are about five genera, maybe about 1,200 plus species that are living, so extant plants. But the interesting thing is that they're an equal or maybe even a greater number of extinct taxa. So how would you distinguish them from other plants? What are their main characteristics? Well, since these are vascular plants versus something like the mosses and liverworts, the non-vascular plants, they have vascular tissue, of course, namely xylem to conduct water and phloem to move uh, photosynthate around. And you know vascular tissue is the plumbing system of vascular plants, and the xylem and phloem are the pipes. And the pipes are made of specialized cells that allow efficient movement of substances through them. Lycophytes are nearly unique in having dichotomous branching of both the stems and roots, so they fork into two parts. The leaves are unique in that they have a single unbranched vascular strand or vein in them. This is what makes them called microfills. So they have a single unbranched vein versus the multiple or branching veins that you see in other vascular plants. All of the lycophytes have sporangia on the upper surface of the leaves or in the angle that's formed where the leaf attaches to the stem. Lycophytes usually have strobili or cones at the tips of the stems, and they all have swimming sperm. So can you break down um, the main lineages of this group? The main considerations for this class are the lycopods, which is the genus Lycopodium, also known as the club mosses. They're small herbaceous plants. They may or may not have cones, and they are homosporous. So all the spores are the same. The other and other group of interest is Selaginella, the genus Selaginella. These are the spike mosses. They are not mosses, of course. They're highly branched, sort of semi upper up, upright herbaceous things. They always have strobili, and they typically have two types of leaves arranged in several four rows. They're heterosporous. Two less common lineages are the quillworts of the genus Isoides. These are aquatic or semi-aquatic. They have long grass-like leaves, short, stocky little stems, and all of the microfills bear sporangia. The fourth um, lineage worth mentioning is are the lepidodendrids. These are extinct only. They were, are arborescent or tree-like. They're known only from the fossil record, but there are literally tons of fossils. All right. And then where do they occur geographically and in their environments and conditions and, and soil preferences? The lycophytes are mostly tropical and temperate, and they occur in both northern and southern hemispheres in the temperate and tropical regions. There are very few species in the Arctic regions, and lycophytes are extremely rare in arid regions, the one exception being the so-called resurrection plant. The lycophytes are most diverse in tropical montane and alpine habitats. They are often in the forest understory or on the forest floor and typically terrestrial, but there are a significant number of epiphytic ones, that is, growing on other plants. And are they significant to human society? Of the living members of the lycophytes, they have a relatively minor, minor impact on human society. There are a few ornamental spike mosses, and one of the spike mosses is a model system in plant biology. The real significance of the lycophytes is the extinct members that have, are the basis of the fossil fuel in the form of coal. And are there any other facts that you want to sort of um, give out on the uh, lycophytes? Club mosses are especially interesting, especially their spores, because they contain an oily, highly flammable compound. This ignites rapidly into a flash of light, 
and it was used by magicians and sorcerers in the Middle Ages of Europe in the British Isles, and also as a flash bulb in early photography. Spores were also used as the first toner in the experimental versions of photocopying machines. Static electricity causes lycopodium spores to stick to glass surfaces, and this is part of the copying process. Interesting. And that was the Lycophytes with Dr. Jernstead. Thank you.